Each year, millions of us travel abroad in search of sun, sea, and occasionally romance. I was just like, oh my God, I felt myself melt. He was charming, he was attentive, he just made you feel special. But beware, predators lurk in our favorite resorts. Some are expert in breaking hearts. I learned an awful lot about the guy that I thought I'd been going to spend the rest of my life with. And others are experts in running down bank accounts. The money I spent on him, probably 18, 19,000 pounds. We expose the heavy emotional price paid by those tricked and conned by holiday love rats. At that point, he just lashed out and slapped me across the face. And we reveal why you could be their next victim. Anybody can fall for a con game. Good con artists will read the people and they will play to their weaknesses. Stirling in Scotland is home to Alana Longshaw. She's 19 years old and openly admits that until recently she lacked experience in matters of the heart. I'd had relationships before, but I had never loved anyone before. I never knew what love was. I never knew how I would feel. That was until she met Jan. It all began in 2010 Alana was a 16-year-old schoolgirl who regularly visited Turkey with her family. She became part of an internet-based fan group for their favorite resort. I had joined a Marmonist group for everyone that goes on holiday there. The next minute I had a message and it was from him saying hello. We started speaking every single night, every week, every day. At the start, they were just online buddies. But in 2010, a family trip to Marmaris on the southwest coast of Turkey transformed their relationship. Alana was there with her mum and family friend Adrian, but ended up having a surprise encounter. I just remember him walking past. Well, I turned around, that's Jan, and he turned around and spotted you. He kind of had his eyes set on you, as if nothing else mattered. Didn't like the look of him, how he was acting. But Adrian's opinion had little impact on Alana. I'd felt myself melt. I was just like, oh my God. Everything about him was better in person. He was so perfect. There was no one way I could fault him. Soon after her first trip, she persuaded her mother to return to Turkey so she could spend more time with Jan. But holidays were not enough, and lovesick Alana set her heart on moving to Marmaris for good. It wasn't happy at all, but even though she was young, she still had the opportunity to do whatever she wanted to do, so I had to just go along with that. I spoke to my mum about it and I said, I really need to go. And she still disagreed and I told her, I'm 16, if you don't let me go, I'm just going to go anyway. So Alana had her wish and in 2011, she flew to Turkey to start a new life with her dream boyfriend. Jeanette Sayers also thought she had met her ideal man abroad. She's a 56-year-old beauty consultant from Whitby in Yorkshire, but her holiday romance turned out to be even stranger than fiction. Following the death of her husband, Jeanette remained single for seven years. But in 2004, her life would change forever. During a holiday with a girlfriend in Sorrento, a small Neapolitan town in southern Italy. We'd planned where we wanted to see. Didn't even think we'd have time to be involved in any holiday romances, either of us. But on her first night out, Jeanette met a handsome stranger in a local bar. He said his name was Rudy Sloot. He came across as a polite gentleman, really. He said that he actually worked with the president in the White House as men in black. He said, I'm an undercover agent. We said, oh, you mean like James Bond? And we both burst out laughing. No, he said, genuinely, that's my job. He then put his charms to work on Jeanette. He asked if it would be OK if he just spent the day with me. At that point, I did really fall for him. He seemed to be such a really lovely man. After their holiday romance, Rudy bombarded Jeanette with texts and phone calls. He said, I think I've fallen in love with you. I'd really like to carry this relationship on and see how things go. He asked if he could pay Jeanette a visit in the UK. She agreed, but he ended up staying. It was like we'd been together for years. I thought this is the relationship I'd love to be in. It was just so lovely. Rudy claimed he was still working for the US Navy 
from a UK military base. And according to Jeanette, he had the credentials to prove it. There's a badge off his naval uniform and then a badge for his car, supposedly to get into the military base. You really would have thought he was um, someone in the forces. But Jeanette was about to find out it was all too good to be true. In January 2011, at the age of just 16, Alana Longshaw moved to Turkey to be with her dream love, Jan. Wedding bells were soon on the horizon. Instead of getting engagement rings, they had his and hers tattoos. For a while, everything went smoothly, but soon her dreams of marriage began to turn sour. The money was running out, so it started to get more stressful between us. So he started to go out more and leave me in. So he would go out with his friends and then come back with not a penny. Towards the end of their time together, Alana says Jan became violent towards her. We were arguing a lot more and then he started shouting about where I had been and who I was with. And at that point, he just lashed out and slapped me across the face. I was so shocked, I couldn't think what to do. So I tried to grab my passport and run out the room. And he had came after me and grabbed the back of my hair and pulled me back in again. So I knew at that point, everything, everything had changed. Alana claims Jan went on to slap her on another occasion. In August 2011, she decided enough was enough and ended their eight-month relationship to return home to Scotland. As soon as I got through the doors at the airport, I just felt like a huge relief. Jeanette Sayers' dream relationship also took a turn for the worse. First, Rudy talked his way into living with her. He then began asking Jeanette to buy him expensive goods. He just nagged, nagged me into to get in this car for him, so I finally gave in. The car was just over £16,000, which was more than I'd ever paid for one of my own cars. Jeanette went on to spend even more on Rudy, who always promised he would pay her back. She started to have doubts about their relationship, and things came to a head when one night he arrived home drunk. I walked over to the sink in the kitchen and he went, get back here now. And I went, no, I said, put my cup in the sink. And he picked me up like you would pick a child up and plonked me back down on the chair. He said, you don't know what kind of life I've led. And I, that, I started to go all cold inside. I was thinking, what does he mean? At that point, he went off to the bathroom. I picked the phone up and dialed 999. He came back out of the bathroom and seeing that I'd grabbed the phone off the wall, and he ran across the kitchen and grabbed the phone off me and said, what have you done? And within about 10 minutes, two police cars turned up. They whispered to me, is there an incident going on here? And they said, just nod or shake your head and I nodded and they asked me to step outside. The next thing I knew they put the handcuffs on him and brought him out of the house and he was looking at me. To this day, I think that look he gave me, if looks could have killed, I would have dropped dead then on the scene. Rudy was placed under arrest and the police later told Jeanette he was a wanted man. They also had another shocking revelation. Not for one minute did I visualise the things that the police came a couple of days later to tell me. Hello, Valerie Bamping. 60-year-old Valerie Bamping is a successful sales manager from Newark in Nottinghamshire. Yeah, but how about Tuesday? Tuesday, because I could be up in your area on Tuesday. She may be a hit in the business world, but it's a different story when it comes to love. I am absolutely disaster with men. For some total reason, I always seem to attract the wrong types. I have no idea why. I always seem to attract the ones who just want a good time rather than the ones who actually want a proper serious relationship. When Valerie went on holiday alone to Marmaris in Turkey in 1999, she found this pattern continued. It was nice. I was getting chatted up by guys that sort of in their 20s, and they are good-looking guys, most of them. It made me feel I was attractive, and there was something, you know, obviously they saw something in me that um, 
you know, made me feel good. Despite the attention, Valerie was not looking for a holiday romance. But then she met a man who would change her mind. I met Ergen Tulak, who actually calls himself Marco. He came across as a very professional man. You know, he took me out for nice meals. Did I find him sexy? Yeah, I suppose it would be, you know, the swathy, dark, good looks. Yeah, to a certain extent, I found him a bit sexy. And he was paying me a lot of attention, which is something that I'd been missing from a relationship. I suppose one thing led to another, and we got to know each other, and we basically started a bit of a holiday romance. Ergun, or Marco, said he was a jeweler, and also claimed he'd worked for the Turkish Special Forces. Valerie thought the relationship was getting serious. She says he gave her a ring, which she took as a sign that marriage was on the cards. He came back with uh, this ring that he claims that he made for me. And, uh, I mean, it, it is 18 karat gold with diamonds and emerald, but it's not exactly what you would think of as an engagement ring. It's just more like a man's ring. Over the next three years, Valerie said she handed over large sums of cash to Marco. That was the motorbike that he persuaded me to buy, 500 pounds. And, oh, it would be our motorbike. Well, we used it once, so I never saw it again. Valerie says she then loaned him £5,000 and that Marco told her he needed the money for a licence so he could carry on trading in gold. He actually sat there on the beach and he cried his eyes out. He said, oh, he says, I'm going to lose everything because I can't afford to renew my gold licence. Carried away with the emotion of the situation, I lent him the money. I was always asking him, when am I get this money, when am I get this money? Oh, well, he said, I've got some business transactions happening. There was always a good excuse and there was always something that was coming and that never did. It was in the third year I was becoming disillusioned with it. The love affair was over, so to speak. Ergen says he never asked Valerie to marry him. He also denies receiving any money from Valerie and instead claims she owes him money Valerie says this isn't true. The couple broke up in 2001 without Valerie receiving back any of the money she said she loaned to Ergen. Valerie also says she later learned he did not own a jewellery shop. Then the wife of Marco's cousin made a shocking revelation. She actually brought me into reality and told me about his wife. I learnt an awful lot about the guy that I thought I'd been to spend the rest of my life with. Our research has revealed Ergen Tulek fathered a child with his Turkish common-law wife during the time he was in a relationship with Valerie. He now has a total of nine children with three different women. Morning. Hi, Jane Cole from Rothwell in Northamptonshire claims she also had a love rat experience which changed her life forever. It all began in 2005, during a dream holiday to Africa. So what you have to say? Not a lot. Just have this and go shopping, then do a bit of packing when I get home. Are you going away? Yeah, Gambia. Oh, wow. The Gambia is in West Africa and is known for its weather, beaches and friendly people. At least you go out there with a brand new hairdo. Yeah, we're working on it. Jane's troubles began during her first trip to the country. She wasn't looking for love, but she was aware the Gambia did have a reputation for holiday romance. In the paper, you read that you go, there's women going out there and they're coming back on one plane and the guys are meeting somebody else off the next plane coming in. I thought, well, that wouldn't happen to me because I'm worldly wise. That self-confidence was put to the test during her first night out in the popular resort of Senegambia. When it all went out for me, and then we got our drinks, and Vanessa said, somebody over there keeps looking. What are you? Oh, I said, no, I can't be bothered. You know you like. Well, then he came over and asked me to dance. He called himself Michael. Originally from Nigeria, he was working in a Gambian nightclub. She was 56, he was 28 and Jane found his charms hard to resist. 
He said, do you want a drink? So we had a drink. Stopped there all night talking. He was asking where I come from. I think at that time I probably just thought it was just an holiday romance, you know, and I'll come home. And that'd be the last I hear or see of him. It wasn't. And it soon became clear Michael wanted to turn their relationship into more than just a one-night stand. At the hotel, he'd left a note. Hi, come by to see you. Can you give me a call? Here's my number. And then I arranged to go to the beach with him the next day. So he'd come and pick me up, carried me back. Quite the gentleman. He was charming, he was attentive. Nothing was too much trouble. He just made you feel special. And, and towards the end of the week, I was completely drawn in. So what began as a holiday romance had developed within months into a serious relationship and eventually marriage was on the cards. Here we go then. But Jane kept her plan secret from the one person she was closest to, her younger sister Tracy. I knew she'd met somebody but I knew nothing about him. She was very evasive about, you know, who, who it was or anything. And I knew she was going away to Gambia and she was going with friends and they was all whispering. And I said, what's going on? She went, nothing. I said, you're going to let's get married, aren't you? She went, no, no, no. And off she went to Gambia. Then when she came back, she told me she got married. So I just told her what a fool she was and I wasn't very happy. After they got married in 2006, Michael suddenly announced he wanted to move into Jane's home in the UK rather than live in the Gambia, as they'd planned. I was shocked, and I was a bit gutted, because I thought, I've done all this to start a life in here, and now it's not going to happen. But I've married him, I'm happy with him. If that's what he wants, then so be it. I did think, is he married me for me, or is he married me to get to England? Once they were living in the UK, Jane began to question whether he was being faithful because he often went missing for long periods. When Jane called a UK telephone number, found repeatedly on his mobile phone bill, her suspicions were confirmed. Someone says, well, I'm ringing you up to see why your number's on my husband's phone bill so much. So she said, who's your husband? I said, Michael. She said, Mike was my boyfriend. So I said, but how long, how long have you been with him? She said, six years. So I rung him up and told him to get his bags packed and clear off. And he thought it was funny when he came in. He said, you know, people look at us and laugh when they see me with you. Well, my confidence went down even more. I was absolutely devastated, absolutely devastated. We have made contact with the woman Jane spoke to, and she has confirmed she was in a relationship with Michael during his marriage to Jane. Jeanette Sayers also feels emotionally betrayed. She believed Rudy Sloot worked for the US military intelligence, but after his arrest in 2005, following an incident at her home, the police reveal the truth. He was a sophisticated con man who'd committed a series of previous offenses and was on the run from Interpol. Rudy Sloot was not even his real name. Psychologically, it's been a lot to deal with. Even all these years after, I still can get emotional about it. And I think, you know... Um... I don't think I'll ever get over it. Ever. It has ruined my trust in people, I have to admit. I'm very, very sceptical when anybody asks for a favour or anything like that. I'm always looking at the other side of it, well, what are you getting out of it? Which is not a nice way to be, because I always used to be a very trusting person.
I was like, oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. She's now 19 and mum to two-year-old Aydin, whose father is her former Turkish boyfriend, Jan. I knew nothing about babies at all. I'd never even held a baby before. It wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. We weren't together and I was only 17. <laughs> Never take Aydan. Alana says Jan has also threatened to snatch her son and take him back to Turkey. He said, if you don't bring him over to see me, then I'm going to come over there and take him. It's really upsetting and disturbing, and I try, I try not to think about it. I would do everything that I could to make sure that he'll never come over here, ever. Calculating conman Rudy Sloot used his relationship with Jeanette Sayers to make his way into the UK. He was arrested at her home, but once on bail, he went on the run. For three months, Jeanette carried on living in the house they once shared, in constant fear, before deciding to sell up and move out. That was nine years ago. Uh, this is where I used to live. And that's the cottage up there in the distance. Um, making me feel a bit shaky. He still had a key to the cottage. And I remember coming home one night from work and the kitchen door had been opened and things had been moved in the kitchen. So instantly I panicked and dialed for the police. Then one of the neighbours said he had actually seen Rudy in the village. So I instantly froze and I felt I had to move. I'm glad I've been and done it. I don't have any fears now of coming and passing through this way. I'm one step near and out. <laughs> getting to my goal of being getting back to 100%. Next, we reveal the disastrous cost of dating a holiday love rat. The money I spent on him, probably 18, 19,000 pounds, easily. Valerie Bamping from Newark says she lent large sums to the man from Turkey she thought she was destined to marry. 4,000 pounds from a credit card. And the more she thinks about it... 5,000 for the gold licence. The more she's come to believe, Ergen was taking advantage of her. All these crazy stories that he came up with that I actually believed. He had never asked me would I give him the money. It was always, could he borrow this? And I said, well, on top of everything else, oh yes, but I will get you everything back. I will get you everything back. I just need this to tide me over. Ergen admits he and Valerie had a good time together, but says any money spent by Valerie was on herself. He also denies withdrawing £4,000 from Valerie's bank account using her credit card. Jeanette Sayers also says she spent thousands of pounds on conman Rudy Sloot. The money probably I spent on him, probably £18,000, £19,000, easily, if not more. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Jane Cole who married love rat Michael on holiday, usually tells her sister Tracy everything. That's quite nice. No? No. You better. No. But in 2006, Jane didn't tell her she was spending thousands of pounds on her new husband, including money to help set up a taxi firm in the Gambia. I did think to myself, I've just got a bank loan out for £15,000 for our car. I brought a minibus, three and a half thousand for the minibus. It was, it was just a waste. I thought that's like 18 and a half thousand pound gone. It started to come out about what she'd given Michael, the car she'd brought him, the money she'd given him. And all the time I'm getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And I'm thinking, God, what have you done? All I kept doing was giving and giving and giving until I had nothing left to give. 
Mary Bamping has discovered reports of other British women who met Ergen in Marmaris. In these reports, the women claim they too believed he was unattached and went on to hand him substantial sums of money. Oh, how I became a real-life Shirley Valentine. It is him. Handsome Turkish gentleman. <laughs> yeah, and the rest. Ergun Tulek disputes these reports and claims one of these women is now his business and life partner. His name keeps cropping up on here, it really does. To find out whether she could have any claim on Ergun Tulek, Valerie is meeting Steve Prophet from the UK scam fighting unit Action Fraud. I suppose it's perceived that I willingly gave him the money. So would that be viewed as, well, there's nothing we can do about that? No, it wouldn't. It doesn't matter that you loaned it to him. We can still deal with that. On the money transfers, the money is untraceable. That the second mm. it leaves you and they pick it up, it's gone. There would be no way, I presume, that I could take it any further, would there? You can. You can still report this. But clearly, yeah. if the documentary evidence isn't available, it significantly weakens the case against this individual yeah. in relation to you, mm. but it doesn't preclude a prosecution. Steve Prophet also has a stark warning for unsuspecting holidaymakers at risk of being targeted each year by love rats. Ultimately, they are there for one thing, that's to make money, to get yes. money off you, yes. and they will go to whatever lengths is necessary. Mm -hmm. And of course, once they've got one payment, it, it then becomes more and more and more. Yeah. And the more payments you're making, the easier it becomes for them. And, and then, frankly, it's a gravy train. There's a lot I learned today that I would never have thought possible. I'm never obviously going to get any money back, but I could still use that information to warn other people. It's all really very interesting. Jane Cole knows the emotional cost of a financial meltdown can push people close to the edge. Her mounting debt resulted in her being declared bankrupt in February 2007. He took everything. He took everything from me. Emotionally, he drained me. I was already on Prozac then, and I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't even tell the doctor what was, what was about me. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't believe that anybody, a man could treat you like that. I think probably I was scared that she'd probably try and take her own life or something because she was in such a bad place. I mean, I know she probably wouldn't have done, but that's how low she was. <sighs> she was a wreck. I've never, ever seen my sister like that. And to see her like that made me bad. Do you know what I mean? It made me upset, cos... She's supposed to be the strong one. She's supposed to look after me. The lives of these women have been devastated by their respective holiday love rat experiences. But do they feel they played any part in their own downfall? I do blame myself a little bit for being foolish enough to enter this relationship with him and let it carry on the way it did. I'm annoyed that I fell for it. I'm supposed to be an intelligent person. But on the other hand, I think to myself, chalk it up to life's experience. I never had an inkling that he was seeing another woman. I felt like I was some stupid old woman. You, you're degraded, you know. How can you be so stupid as to do what you do? The only feeling of guilt I have is for Aidan. One day I'll need to tell him, maybe not what happened, but I will have to explain in, in some way why Jan is not here and why things never worked out between us. Jeanette Sayers is still rebuilding her life in Whitby. Hello. Hello. Her new partner, Adrian, is a professional chef. They met nine years ago. So I was at work, and one of the lads there, David, said, he said, there's new last year started. She's really nice. I think you're going to like it. And I was making a cup of tea, and got talking to Jen, and, and that was the start of it. Just have a simple cup of tea at work in the kitchen. But Adrian knew nothing about Jeanette's nightmare foreign romance. I had to tell Adrian about what had happened because I didn't want him to find out off someone else. It was like a film script. The way you described it, it was, it was almost like a film script. Yeah. But it didn't sound 100% believable to start with, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
After being arrested, Rudy Sloot was placed on bail. He then went on the run for three years, but his luck eventually ran out in Cumbria. Everywhere I went, I was always scared I was going to bump into him. And I got a phone call from the detective that had been on the case. And he said, I hope you're sitting down. Uh, He said, you're not going to believe it, but he said he's actually been caught. Jeanette's holiday love rat pleaded guilty to deception and perverting the course of justice. On the 12th of September 2008, he was sentenced to over two years in prison. A year later, his sentence was extended when he was convicted of four further counts of theft and deception. To have new friends and a new life, and a new partner, it was a new beginning. Jane Cole has also been through a traumatic experience, but this hasn't put her off returning to the place where her problems all began. I'm packing my suitcase because I'm off to the Gambia with some friends. Bit of sunshine. Really looking forward to it. But she's also aware that she could cross paths with Michael in the Gambia, where he was last seen by her sister two years ago. But if I did see him, I'd like to confront him and ask why. Why he treated me so bad. How you could do that to somebody. I believed everything he told me. If he'd have told me I ain't got another woman, I would have believed him. If I'd have saw him with another woman and he'd have said, that's, oh, that's a friend, I would have believed him. Jane's experience has had an impact on her ability to trust. <laughs> it's a recurring theme among victims of holiday love rats. Conman Rudy Sloot may have been put behind bars for his crimes against Jeanette, but the emotional damage he'd inflicted put a serious strain on her relationship with her new partner, Adrian. Because I had this trust issue with Adrian, every th time he was late at home, or um, he said he was going somewhere, I wanted to know if he, where he was going, when he was going, when he was coming back, because I was comparing him to Rudy. I mean, Jen's got violent with me in some points, haven't you? Because the trust issues with things. Um, I've never had scratches on my face from you and, and scratches down my arms and, and all sorts. I did put up with a lot. Um, normally I'd have probably walked away. Um, but because of what Jen had been through, I made allowances. Um, and it was hard. I had to go to a therapist and talk it through, just to get it out of my system, basically. And it helped a lot. It did help, yeah. Oh. To come off. Come on, then. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> Alana Longshore is also coming to terms with life after her love rat experience. She came back to Sterling pregnant and has since discovered more about her ex-boyfriend Jan's post-breakup relationships. In July 2013, he appeared in the national news in connection with another young British teenager. I just seen the headline and seen his face and I just remember thinking, oh my God, what has he done now? In a newspaper interview in summer 2013, Morat Janatani described himself as a bad boy and admitted he can't stay with just one girl for more than a few weeks. I started getting the messages about all the different girls that he was going to meet. I would say, all in all, it was about 15 different women. He would say things like, after Aiden was born, me and my new girlfriend are going to have a baby and it's going to be better than the baby I had with you. It was all messages relating to a new girlfriend all the time. Jeanette Sayers also still bears the psychological scars of her time with the con man she knew as Rudy Sloot. But who was he? I know that he got the name because he'd interviewed a guy for a driving job and he took this guy's identity. Rudy also used the name Anthony de Klerk, and while he was on bail for the crimes against Jeanette, he conned other innocent victims. He's gone on to the Lake District area, 
and applied for a job as a chef. He said he'd, he'd stolen £20,000 from the safe and had racked up £21,120 on debit cards. The police caught up with him and he was convicted for these further crimes. Detectives have now revealed his real name is Peter Van Damme, that he was originally from Belgium and that he targeted people right across Europe. Jeanette has travelled to the University of Central Lancashire to meet psychologist Dr Paul Seeger, who is an expert on how con men operate. If somebody kind of met you on a holiday romance and after a couple of days said, oh, can you lend me 16 grand? No way on earth you're, you're ever going to do that. However, if you kind of do it gradually uh, and you do it right, it would be a, a very strong person that resisted. I, I, I can absolutely see uniform, badge like this, a sign of authority. Um, Any time somebody's we perceive to be an authority over us, we are more likely to um, go along with what they're asking of us. I'm going to ask you a slightly odd question. If I was to ask you to rate his attractiveness on a 1 to 10 scale, how would you rate his attractiveness? At the time, of 10. Right. No matter what we might say, we might say, oh, no, it's nothing to do with physical attractiveness. It's about personality, that kind of thing. But um, a number of tests suggest over and over again the thing that we're most persuaded by of physical attractiveness. I feel guilty for bringing him actually into the country and then him going on to scam people out of money. If you'd have kind of rebuffed him, it's not as if he was going to suddenly say, Do you know what, I'll give up my life of con artistry. He would have just moved on to somebody else. According to the Office of National Statistics, more than 1,000 people each year become victims of dating scams. So Jeanette is not alone. It's a relief, obviously, to know that I haven't been as foolish as I think I've been and that I'm not the only one and there is hundreds of people out there that it happens to who never ever report it. And for me, it's made me feel a lot better about myself. Next, Alana's determination to keep her young son out of the hands of her former lover. I'm hoping Naiden will be able to live a safe life in the UK with no threats of Jan coming over here and taking him from me and that we can just get on with our lives. Jane Cole has finally arrived in the Gambia. For her, it's an idyllic holiday destination that over the years she has grown to love. It's laid back, beautiful weather, nice beaches, just love it, full stop. But she struggled to cope during her very first trip back to the country after her marriage to Michael collapsed. The first time I went out was very difficult, very, very difficult. Emotionally, it was awful because everywhere we went is where I'd been with him. It, it is like confronting memories and it was hard. I thought, do I want to be here? Because there's too many memories here. I just thought I need to get on with my life and try and move on. The Gambia is well known for holiday romance. But the more Jane uncovers about Michael's past behaviour, the more difficult she's finding it to forgive and forget. He was living with a woman here. She bought him a car. I spoke to the woman after we'd split up. We came here, I came here to a friend's wedding. She said, are you Jane? I said, yeah. She said, I didn't know he was seeing you, Jane. I didn't know that he was married. She said, I did see him with you at the airport once and he told me that uh, he was your tour guide and if I came over and spoke to him he would make out he didn't know who I were and I thought yeah I can believe that because that's the sort of person he was. We've tried to contact Michael to ask him for his response to Jane's allegations but he could not be traced. Back in Stirling Teenage mama Lana Longshaw is seeking legal advice. She claims former boyfriend Jan has made threats to take her son Aydin back to Turkey. 
I'm hoping today with the advice that I'm going to get that shows that I have more rights about Aidan than Jan does, as I am the main carer. I'm hoping Aidan will be able to live a safe life in the UK with no threats of Jan coming over here and taking him from me and that we can just get on with our lives. You haven't come too far today? No, not too far. Just in here. Thanks very much. Solicitor Fraser Tate specialises in family law and Alana is hoping his advice can ease her concerns. He has given threats that he would come here and take Aidan back to Turkey and that I would never see him again. There's two ways he could try and get Aidan legally and illegally. Now, if it's legally, he's going to have to go through the courts, and if it's illegally, he's basically going to have to try and snatch Aidan, and he would be very foolish to try and do that, because more than likely he'll be caught. In terms of legally, Aidan's never been in Turkey, so Mr Artani would have to raise a court action in Scotland. From what you've told me, I think it's highly unlikely that a court would consider it's in Aidan's interest to see his father. So in general, how would you say my position was? You're the only parent Aidan has known. You're the main carer for Aidan. He's always stayed with you. He's always stayed in this country. I think it's highly unlikely that uh, Aidan would have to have any contact with his father. Good news for Alana. I feel so relieved that all the doubts in the back of my mind have been answered, that me and Aidan are going to be safe and that there's not really anything Jan can do to take Aidan from me or to come here and hurt any of us. I just feel like this is the part where it can all be in the past and that I can move on and just a fresh start and not have to worry about what's going to happen and if I'm going to have my son taken from me. We've made contact with Jan, but we've been unable to get any response to questions about his relationship with Alana. Give me the butter, please. And how much garlic do we normally put in? That and a bit more. Back in Whitby, Jeanette and her fiance Adrian are now in a good place in their relationship, despite the fallout from her time with the con man she knew as Rudy Sloot. I think we're nicely now setting our ways, I would put it. Um, Some people call it getting old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he said, it's like getting old, but yeah. we, we, it's drawn us together, really, really drawn us together. They've now been engaged for eight years, but Adrian hopes that one day, Jeanette will finally agree to be his wife. I'm just uh, taking it slowly yeah, so I know that. I can get to know him properly before I make any big, <laughs> more big decisions. No, I'm just rushing away from me. <laughs> Maybe one yeah. day. Yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> Jeanette is just one amongst an army of people targeted each year by holiday love rats. Many victims choose to suffer in silence, too afraid to speak out. When I think about Marco now, it's just contempt that I feel for him. He's such an arrogant sort of person. Just think, he's pathetic. He's a pathetic man who thought he was better than everybody else. Make sure Aiden has everything he needs and just be a, a role model for him and show him the right way so he never ends up in a horrible situation or ends up a horrible person like his dad is. I suppose it makes you a bit wiser when something like that happens to you. You try, you think, well, it ain't never going to happen again. Hopefully it won't. I'm not the soft touch I used to be. And I don't think I will ever let anybody get the better of me like that again.